Thank you very much for inviting us to speak today and delighted to present to the assembled group. Uh, I work as the chief medical officer at Taurus Biomedical and I'm a urologist by training. So Taurus is a company just outside Boston that is developing a product initially invented at MIT at the labs of Robert Langer and Michael Sima about 10 years ago uh, and particularly focused on urologic diseases including overactive bladder, bladder cancer, and upper tract urothelial carcinoma. The OAB program, known as TAR302, uh, is a device that is able to hold 850 milligrams of trospium chloride and is able to be placed in the human bladder for up to 84 days. Uh, this here is a United States quarter. It's about the size of a euro coin or two. Um, and we have some data today to present to you on a phase 1B study that um, is closed and 1C that is currently enrolling. Uh, so obviously, as we all know, oral OAB therapies are uh, often hampered by AEs, uh, poor compliance and uh, limited or lack of efficacy. And as we all know from products such as um, interstim and botulinum toxin, uh, there's a substantial need for improved therapies for patients who are poorly controlled with these oral agents. Um, our drug device combination is a biocompatible silicon polymer with a nickel titanium or nitinol wire. Uh, it exerts a spring constant, and so it can be linearized into what looks like a noodle or a worm, and when it enters the bladder after being placed with an omedended urethral catheter, assumes this pretzel shape uh, and is very difficult to spontaneously void. Um, it ensures, obviously, compliance unless the patient wishes to have the device removed. It's then removed with a flexible cystoscope and a non-toothed grasper. Um, we have run Gottingen mini pig models as part of the FDA preclinical GLP process in the United States using Gottingen mini pigs, which have bladders very similar in homology to that of the human bladder, and these products are well tolerated uh, both acutely and chronically over the long term. We're able to generate urine levels markedly above what can be achieved with oral agents and intra, uh, intravenous agents in the oncology space, and we are currently investigating this product in overactive bladder patients. Design was quite simple. Um, we initially wanted to show a proof of concept in a device that was indwelling for six weeks or 42 days. Heretofore, the most long-term use of our product was three weeks. Uh, we essentially enrolled 11 patients to receive a one six-week dose of our product via a catheter and then retrieved, as I said, via a flexible cystoscope. Endpoints, obviously, in a phase 1B design were primarily safety and tolerability. PK urine levels, both trospium chloride in the urine and blood, and a study of the reduction in urgent continent events um, using a bladder diary, as well as some quality of life metrics um, in the OABQ short form. Uh, all subjects were female, um, were diagnosed with idiopathic or non-neurogenic overactive bladder, and were refractory to at least two uh, oral agents. Many of these patients, in fact, were refractory to uh, at least four uh, anticholinergics, in some cases beta-3s, and in one patient's case, botulinum toxin. Um, we had 11 patients successfully complete the study, and here you see the demographics. Uh, in all, TAR-302 is well tolerated. AEs were mild, typically associated with the insertion and removal procedures, and uh, included hematuria, some bladder discomfort, which was known as bladder flutter, a sense of the device in one case, and bladder pain. We only had one report of a typical anti-muscarinic side effect. We saw no constipation, obstipation, or change in cognition or blurry vision. However, on one day, uh, in one subject, there was a spontaneous report of dry mouth, which spontaneously resolved. Interestingly, we did have two patients with UTIs. Many of these patients, as we heard from Dr. Moore and others, have, uh, are at risk for UTIs at baseline. Um, we did not require pre -op or prophylactic antibiotics uh, based on feedback from investigational review boards, um, but then mandated uh, that in subsequent studies. Um, and the PK urine levels, which we had on all patients across five time points in the study, were three to six-fold higher than that which is seen with uh, oral bioavailable trospium. I'm sorry for the busy slide, but to provide you all the data in one, um, in these 11 patients, again, the device was removed at 42 days, and the inventory of leak burden was recorded on a three-day diary, but the per-day leak burden, uh, per day leak burden uh, decreased by 75% in these subjects from a baseline average of 5.5 leaks per day to 1.4. Uh, we did have three of 11 subjects fully continent at day 42. Nine of these 11 subjects enjoyed a 50% improvement in their leak burden. Um, of note, their symptom bother was markedly decreased. There was a 41-point decrease on this um, OABQ symptom bother scale, as well as a 45-point increase in the quality of life subscale. And while this is a very nascent early finding, the device was removed at day 42. We, re we requested 
that all of our investigators, again, inventory leak burden and symptom bother and control at day 84, six weeks after removal of the device. And contrary to our uh, thought that we might see a negative placebo response, um, we saw persistent improvement where patients had not yet achieved or had nearly achieved 50% of their baseline leak burden. The bar charts are here just to show you. This was not placebo controlled, obviously. This is a phase one proof of concept study. Um, and we took this data and subsequently enrolled another 34 patients who are now receiving this device for an 84-day dwell time. Uh, the data is promising. Uh, we're very excited to present that at a subsequent meeting, and we again are seeing uh, quite excellent safety and tolerability. So um, we're excited to potentially offer an option to patients who are dissatisfied or unsatisfied with current oral therapies and think this may represent a novel way of drug delivery in the bladder across benign and oncologic urologic conditions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there comments or questions? Alan? Yeah, Alan Wayne from Philadelphia. You don't think that the 52% of day 84 is the placebo effect? Because if, if that's true, then it's the same as with any overactive bladder drug. You get a decrease of about 70% with the drug and 40% with the placebo. Yeah, it's an excellent question, Dr. Wien. So it's one that we sought to probe with the current phase 1C study, which is dosing with the device and dwelling for 84 days. So we'll look to that data to answer that question. Homer van Koeveringen from Maastricht, the Netherlands. Uh, thank you very much for presenting this promising study. Um, I have a very odd question. Did any of your 11 patients have concomitant stress incontinence? Uh, it's a very good question. I'm sorry I neglected to, to note that. We tried our best to eliminate stress incontinence. We tried our best essentially to enroll those with pure urge incontinence. Um, so those with stress incontinence were excluded from the study. Mm, thank you. Gleckman from UK. First of all, I think that you used a very sensible anti-muscarinic for the purpose. Um, my question to you is really preclinical in a sense. You did the um, studies with the mini pigs for uh, the GLP. Did you use both gender? Because catheterizing bores is one hell of a job. <laughs> or did you, did you just use sows? Yeah, sows. Excellent question. The boars have a essentially a very yeah. spiral-like... So you, you, you were allowed to do the GLP studies just using sows? Yes. The FDA were happy? Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good presentation.